Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Today we're taking a look on how I went about painting the Destiny flagship for the uh, Destiny Battlefleet box set that I recently reviewed and how I went about subassembling the whole thing. Um, doing subassemblies for models this large is pretty much a necessity and uh, there's a few handy things that you can leave off of them as well that you want to paint in a different color scheme such as these uh, tail ends uh, because I want to do them in a metallic while the rest of it uh, gets a different color, a gray color. So it's very handy with these plastic sets that you can just keep them off and assemble them later on. For the two resin bits I went for a different color primer, the first one being a light grey on the top bridge section because it will have white parts, but it will still have lots of metallic parts. And for the bottom um, part I actually have primed it in black because it will be largely metallic. Ideally for metallics you want a black base coat, um, but for the white parts that's going to be a nightmare to go over them, so the top bridge is going to be uh, done in white. Now the whole thing isn't going to be white, uh, the white parts are just given a coat of uh, contrast Griff Charger Grey that I do dilute 50-50 with water and I mostly focus on painting the bridge sections on them because the metallics will be done later on. And then to neaten things up again I'm going over them with this colour from Vallejo and uh, once that is all done, the dry brushing etc, I'll be painting the bottom bits in metallic and uh, the middle section. Now when it comes to the sides uh, bits, I, uh, I actually take the small bits off what I, when I'm done priming them, those tail ends, because uh, the center part is going to be painted in a, uh, a sort of a medium bluish grey, and for that I used Citadel the Fang. Now this is the air variant, you don't need to use that one, you can use anything really, and if you're hand painting them, this is a very good possible alternative, which is Somber Grey from Vallejo Game Color, which covers way better than the air paints, which is normal because they are diluted. After that, I uh, go over it with a Rust Grey uh, top layer, a zenital, if you will, and uh, if you want to have an alternative for that one from Vallejo, you can use uh, Steel Grey. It's slightly more towards the blue end, but uh, it's not going to be massively different from the results I'm getting. Speaking of the results I'm getting, if you don't have access to an airbrush, you can always use some uh, cheap makeup brushes and uh, progressively uh, uh, dry brush on the different colors and overbrush them for a very similar result if you use a bit of a stippling motion instead. The reason why I'm keeping all the bits separate is it well, it makes me not have to be neat for everything. So I'm just using a base of Iron Warriors on the, uh, the back fins of the balloons so that they're nice and easy to do as well. And similarly, I just uh, take the, the central bit and just add a bunch of Iron Warriors to it. And then I start picking out some details with a tiny tin in this case, just so you break up that uh, monotonous uh, bit. Now the wooden decking is going to be breaking it up a bit as well, but uh, doing some small areas such as these uh, and these lines along the back fins just make your model look like you've put in a lot more effort than perhaps you have. Now these paint guide videos are not so much about me painting live on camera and you watching paint dry, but it is all about taking you to the different steps and the reasoning why I do things in what order, so that your paint jobs can hopefully become uh, faster as well in the future. And uh, if you like that kind of content, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future videos. Now the main reason for doing all the different metallics is because they can all benefit from a same dry brush at the end, which is Vallejo Steel, which is just going to be applied all over the metal bits and them being separate makes this nice and easy. Speaking of nice and easy, if you haven't uh, gone and got these yet, these are some clamps that you can find in any do-it-yourself store really, where you can uh, pinch down on some parts of the model where it's not important that you get a bit of a blotchy finish at the end. Uh, I'm going to be applying Nuln Oil all over my metallics because it has this sort of uh, nice uh, satin finish to it, it doesn't dull down the metallics too much. And uh, when you apply that, it can leave for a bit of a splotchy mark if you have it lying flat on the floor like this or flat on your workbench. So you definitely want to have something to keep it uh, upright, keep it off of the table so that it uh, dries nice and neatly. Because you're going to have to apply a lot of Nuln oil as well over uh, on this model, the, the other, uh, the central bit. But I do that after I've painted the brown for, uh, for the runway, which is Saddle Brown by Vallejo Game Color. I went for a bit of a reddish brown because that is uh, something I always associate with uh, the United States it's that typical red-brown wood color. Now there are a lot of small patches that need to be done and the bad news is you are going to have to do two coats 
of this brown because uh, painting over metallics is always a nightmare the the shimmer always comes through if you don't and uh, yeah two coats lots of patience you're down to the the difficult bit of painting a model because uh, this is what happens if you only do a single passing of that paint on there there's going to be areas where the paint is slightly more runny and you just don't get nice and neat coverage so second coat definitely needed for these the good news is though if you're doing your second coat it's going to go a lot faster because usually the nooks and crannies get filled in best with the paint on top of that i've used the same uh, gray colors on the little airplane to match them up and uh, this is the part where uh, you have to work fast which is uh, shading gnome oil all across it now if you leave obvious lines there where you stop working and you're not fast enough to work wet in wet you're going to have a hard time to get a neat coverage across the model the other bad thing about it is that you are going to have to do um, a bit of matte varnishing on the wood deck, otherwise that non oil is going to give your wooden decking the same shimmer as your metallics, and I do not quite like that effect. This is what the upper deck looks like after it's been given its uh, shade with uh, the contrast paint, the Griff Charger Grey. And if you're going to go clean it up again, I'm using that same grey, that uh, Storm Grey from Vallejo, to uh, clean up the, the bits and make sure that any uh, unnecessary splotches, which is something you can get with contrast paints, are fixed. And then afterwards, it is given a bit of a dry brush of white, but uh, yeah, I do all of this now because uh, the metallic bits are going to be up next. And uh, yeah, that's uh, a night white is a nightmare to paint over. Make sure that you do try to be as neat as possible because fixing this white color is going to be tricky. And with uh, some sub stages done, this is pretty much what we end up with. Uh, we've got the wooden deck done on uh, the top bridge as well. Now it's time to focus on the great parts that make up the majority of, uh, of the blimps. But before we start uh, shading them, I'm going to give them a, a quick dry brush with that light grey. But make sure that you hit it very, very lightly because it's just supposed to catch the edges in this stage. Um, after the dry brush is applied, we're going to be shading it with some uh, Nuln Oil. I did a bit of detailing as well, and uh, a quick tip, I always blast my models with some uh, varnish, because I have noticed that Nuln Oil can have a tendency to reactivate paint that has been applied too quickly. So uh, a hairbrush, uh, sorry, a hair dryer, along with uh, some, uh, some matte varnish, We'll, uh, we'll fix that. Now before we apply the Nuln Oil, I'm picking out some parts with some uh, Black Templar contrast paint. Uh, again, this is just mostly to break everything up. Now it still looks super blodgy and uh, not nice at this point, but it doesn't matter because we'll be picking out a lot of details and trimming on the model now with uh, this Tin Bits. Tin Bits is an excellently covering paint, by the way. You won't be mucking about with doing too thin coats with those. Same for Iron Warriors, that is a base coat that covers really really well uh, this brassy brass is one that i really love but that one does require two or three coats before you get a neat covering effect and full opacity and because some of these metallic paints cover this well um, it uh, is a lot less tedious than you would think uh, applying all of these on there and they also have been given a coat of non oil now one small detail i did is add a bit of fiery effect with some uh, red oranges and yellows into the center of it uh, to sort of make it look like it's an engine that uses up quite a lot of fuel and of course i've repeated it twice over uh, don't bother painting the broadsides on one side because we'll be gluing those parts together along with the decking but again the decking surprisingly took a lot longer because it is poorly covering paint over uh, metallics and I'll also be painting the windows of uh, the bridge parts and to do this I'll be using a bit of white ink that I will then be covering with this contrast ether matic blue for a very quick and easy effect for uh, lighting up uh, or a light blue light if you will um, you do want to use that white ink first otherwise that uh, contrast paint is going to look absolutely messy and uh, I'm going to be doing that as well on all of the bridge parts but before we start doing the windows it is now a, a third slightly more tedious step and that is picking out all of the metallics in the middle there so that the, the white parts really do pop and aren't used too much on the model. If you want to create nice balanced color schemes, some colors really do not require a lot of surface area to be an integral part of your color scheme. Whites, yellows, oranges do not need to be all in your face across the model for them to really pop. And the final bit is of course washing all of those metallics with uh, the Nuln Oil like I have been doing all the time. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much uh, what we end up with. 
And there we have it, that is the complete model finished. I'll uh, leave you with uh, this uh, still shot that I took of it, and uh, I really liked painting this model. It was nice and easy to do, but yeah, again, you really do want to go for sub-assemblies on a task this big, because otherwise it'll be very tricky to do. Now, up next, I'll be discussing the different rules for the aerial units for the Union, because uh, this model doesn't only look good, it is also pretty damn awesome on the tabletop as well. So I hope to see you in that next video when that time comes. Until then! Bye.